And the Mariners just won their 20th game of the month, of the month of August. And I feel like it's been the first time they've done that since August of 20, of 2001. It's been that long. Wow. And that was the time when they won 20 games in April, May, and I think August, because I think the other ones were like, the other like 18 kind of win kind of months. So, but before I get into this game, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as I would like to get myself out of 666 because I'm on that number, the number of the devil. So don't leave me there and don't make it go low either. But let's get into this game. First, it was J.P. Crawford with a leadoff home run. That's his fifth leadoff home run of the season. Twelfth home run. He has absolutely been a lot better than last year, I must say. Next, it was Julio Rodriguez. He doubled, scoring J.P. Crawford. And, man, J.P. Crawford got on base again. Let me see how he even did today. He was two for four with a walk. So he really did get on base a lot, which he really does. Then Teoscar Hernandez hit a single. And then Julio scored. And then Dylan Moore, he scored with a fielder's choice, scoring in Suarez. And then Julio Rodriguez hit a two-run home run, scoring J.P. Crawford again. And then you got Teoscar Hernandez singling to right field, where Julio did score. And what a game it was. They completely just manhandled the Oakland A's. Mariners are still hanging on that division lead. And let me took a look at the stat. Let me look at the stat lines for the pitchers. First, it was Brian Wu. He was absolutely amazing today. Five strikeouts, only allowed three hits, and just 69 pitches. But unfortunately, Scott Service did take him out a bit, a bit early, which I, I I really do think that he should have kept pitching. Like, there's no better rehab than just pitching it through. I mean, you can't just base on these pitching management decisions based on something that might happen. And then after that, the bullpen pretty much gave up a total of one hit. So I can't really say they were garbage like as much as I do by the combined efforts of T Saucedo, Isaiah Campbell, and Thornton. So they all pitched very well. So I guess, I mean, especially when you have a 7 nothing lead, there's not really much to say. So the good news, of course, the Mariners did win. But the bad news is the Blue Jays won, the Astros won, and more importantly, the Texas Rangers won, which means the Mariners are still just maintaining their one-game lead. So that's all I could say where Mariners just have to keep winning. They can't afford to lose. And now let's take a look at the matchup for tomorrow. We've got George Kirby against a guy 2-7. and seven. I can't even read his name. Uh, Waldichuk. So that's a guy. And then after that, we've got the Blue Jays. They got a decent pitcher as well. You got, well, maybe Houston has a chance because Bellows pitching, so he's one of the better pitchers. But then you got the Mets, so Mariners absolutely have to win. Like, I know there's that old saying of, well, you can't win every single game. That doesn't work that way. This is baseball. Yeah, but then when you look at the situation, you can't really afford to lose on this one, especially when Texas, you would think, would win that game with a guy named Heaney. He's 9-6 and six with a 4.34 against a guy named Quintana, went 1-5 and five with a 3.73. So, Mariners have to go out there, and they have to win the game. But, I mean, this is I mean, this has been the most impressive offensive performance the Mariners have been having. Like, I really am taking pleasure in it, because I really did defend this offense all year long. But, it did get better because of that Paul Seawall trade. But, no matter how good the Mariners do going forward, I do expect the absence of Paul Seawald to be known and there will be days where if the Mariners do lose if Munoz doesn't get it all together then I would expect those times where people will tweet out there and go man do I miss Paul Seawald and I do miss him it's just that I think the effects of the no Paul Seawald hasn't necessarily happened yet with the exception of that Baltimore series and that Chicago game and a game in Kansas City where Matt Brash blew the save but I think the time will come eventually where you're going to say, man, Mariners really need a closer because unless Munoz 
can really develop that slider in such short little time, which I don't expect, it's going to be tough to see the Mariners actually have their bullpen good in the long term. But I, but I mean, I don't have to complain about it now because the offense did so well. Bullpen only gave up a total of one hit. I mean, you did play Oakland. That's the thing. You did play Oakland, so that's why I'm keeping my excitement of this victory reserved. But let's go for win number 21. That would be the franchise record because the Mariners have only gone up to only 20. So let's make it 21, and they have two chances. I mean, they've got to at least get one of them, right, against Oakland. I mean, you'd be surprised if they don't, right? I mean, No, I, w I would not be surprised at all. So those are my thoughts on the game. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, as I'm still stuck at 666, the number of the devil. Hit that subscribe button to get me out of the devil. And don't unsubscribe to get me out of the devil either. It can only go up. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good night and go Mariners.